right, perfect. There we Michaela, go. can you hear me? Yep, sounds good. Awesome, thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Um, hey, I got a question for you. Where are you located currently? Are you still in Russia or where are you at right God, now? God, no, I'm in Florida. You're in Florida, okay. Oh, well, that's, that's much better than, <laughs> I saw that you would have there. Been, that would have been rough. Yeah, goodness. Yeah, I was wondering because I know this, I don't know what happened with the coronavirus in Russia and stuff like that. But hey, um, just an update. How's your family doing? And I saw your dad was, you know, he was he was innovated and you know, and and he came out. So I assume thing. And mom was he had you know issues. Are people finally getting healthier, or what's going on with you you guys? Um, my mom's doing really well, um, so that's a relief. Um, my dad is still recovering. It's still yeah. going to be a while, but. He's through the worst of it. Russia was absolutely dreadful. Like, yeah. I mean, Russia was, it was good that we were there, but the experience there was pretty dreadful. Things are on the upswing anyway. I've never been to Russia. How did you like Russia? It was, I would recommend going in the summer and not in the winter. Like February in Russia was not ideal. Uh, it was incredibly dark, but it was really interesting. And I would recommend going. Um, it was Moscow, like downtown was beautiful. The outskirts were pretty sketchy, um, but it was, it was much more beautiful than I thought it was going to be. Um, and the people are there are really interesting. Like uh, Russians are not like North Americans. And it's just, it's, it's really interesting to go to a place that has a completely different culture. And Russia certainly does. And when you say they weren't like North America, in what way did you mean? Were they, I mean... I mean, obviously they spoke um, Russian, but <laughs> well, yeah, that, that that was weird too. Um, but they're just, um, I guess they're. I don't want to use the word closer exactly, but they're friendlier um, and also rougher and more straightforward. So there's less skirting around. There's less politeness, but they're also they also treat you more like family, which I guess. It goes to goes along with like less politeness. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, familiarity. I mean, they just kind of just kind of a little more brusque, but to the point and, and more genuine, I suppose. Maybe perhaps that's yeah. Uh, almost it's almost more genuine. Almost. Yeah. It, it was weird though, uh, and I'm glad it was stressful. But uh, and I think the other interesting thing about Moscow is, and I, I talked to people who lived there. There's an underlying stress just from living in Moscow from I think just the instability Russia's faced for so long that we don't have in North America, although we, we do now, <laughs> we do now. But um, that like stress that everybody's feeling now about like maybe there isn't going to be food in the grocery store, like that kind of thing, that is kind of underlying Moscow all the time. So living there was, was stressful and now I, we're experiencing a kind of a taste of that, I, I find. And you were there for what, a month or two? How long were you there for? uh just over six weeks six weeks yeah and did you have a hard time maintaining your diet while you were there what was the deal on accessibility and able to get the food you're well eating? so if if somebody from north america goes there the meats meat's cheap food is cheap um but i found that actual russian beef made me feel pretty terrible so that was horrible i got there i was like the only safe food i have something's wrong with it and i think what they do um and i've heard reports of this from India is I think they use an anti-mold spray on the meat. Um, so every time I ate, I'd get like a red flushed face and um, I started getting eczema and things. And I was just eating beef. I thought, okay, this really doesn't, it wasn't God awful, but it really wasn't making me feel very good. So we started eating uh, imported beef. So I had like New Zealand lamb and um, I don't remember where the beef was from, but it wasn't from Russia and I had no problem with that. So yeah, it was a problem in Russia for sure. Um, but yeah, probably I, would, I think, I think a lot of the beef that gets exported to Russia is probably Brazilian. Most likely would be my guess. Yeah, it was Brazilian beef yeah. uh, and New Zealand lamb. And that was fine. And you could get that in restaurants too. Um, but it took me, you know, a solid two weeks to figure out, figure out that I couldn't eat uh, Russian beef. So that was a, uh, that scared me. It was like, I'm stuck here and I'm reacting to the beef. Now you are, uh, I don't know how long it's been now, six months or so out from that revision ankle replacement. How's that thing doing? <laughs> it's been uh, just over a year. Oh, it's yeah. doing like, I wouldn't recommend anyone get an ankle replacement if they can avoid getting an ankle replacement because they're just not like hip or knee replacements. Um, so 
it's okay. Like I have, I have more movement than I did prior to the revision. Prior to the revision, I was stuck. I wasn't even in neutral. So that was rough. Um, it's much better than it was. I can almost walk. I can pretty much walk without a limp. Well, that, I mean, that's an improvement. That's good for you. Awesome to hear. Yeah. So tell us, uh, you know, because you've had a lot of, uh, you know, obviously famously uh, with the diet, with, with you, know, uh, you know, beef and water, you, you're calling it the lion diet. But um, are you still experimenting a little bit? I mean, I know you, you, you've done a, you know, a fecal transplant at one point. Um, you're trying to heal the gut. Um, what, what, what kind of things are you, have you tried recently in the last year that have worked or haven't worked or how have things been working for it? What's, 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 what's going on these days? Okay. Well, this is something people should know about when I first went to, so just to give a bit of a background, if anyone here doesn't know, um, I went like really restrictive, like basically allergen free, like grain free, nut free, dairy free, egg free, like everything free. Um, for a couple of years before I went to all beef. Um, and I just kept getting more and more and more restrictive and I had pretty good results with that. Um, and then when I went to all beef, um, I ended up with a C difficile infection and I'm, I've like other people have reached out with similar experiences. I think my microbiome was depleted enough from like two decades of antibiotics that I had the problem. And when I cut out all the vegetables, the carb consuming bacteria that were kind of keeping the C. diff in check died off. And I had this C. diff infection. And I, and so all my autoimmune symptoms went away and my depression eventually lifted, but I had this C. diff infection that wouldn't go away. And, um, I tried the fecal matter transplants. I like, um, this was an antibiotic resistant C. difficile. And I ended up fixing it, um, by, and this was like, this was a low point because I couldn't figure out what else to do. And I was on the verge of being hospitalized for the C. diff infection. Um, and I found this research paper where they took um, fecal matter transplants, double encapsulated them in pills and swallowed them. So they hit the small intestine instead of the large intestine. And so I did that like myself in my kitchen uh, with samples I bought from the Taymount Clinic, um, which do fecal microbiota transfers. And my symptoms were gone the next day. So I haven't had a C. diff. I haven't had any symptoms of C. diff for like 10 months or something when I got desperate enough to do that. Um, so that was good. Obviously, I stayed on the beef diet because it wasn't the C. diff infection wasn't exactly caused by it. I'm sure it was there and it just like unearthed itself. Um, so that was exciting. And then what have I been? I've been trying to figure out exactly how to reduce my sensitivities because I was so ridiculously sensitive. Like I couldn't do spices. Um, for a while I couldn't even do aged beef because that was giving, that was making me dizzy afterwards. I was like, this is way too much. Um, I have to calm my body down somehow. Um, and I think actually getting rid of the C. diff, um, has helped that a lot, which isn't that surprising. Um, so recently I've re managed to reintroduce wild salmon, which is fantastic and tuna. So I've been sticking with the wild fish. Um, and, that's all been fine. I tried pork and pork made me feel it's actually, I can still feel it. It really didn't work for me. Um, and chicken kind of makes still kind of makes me feel slow afterwards, but it's not that big a deal. Um, so I'm, I am trying to expand, um, hoping to get rid of some of the sensitivities, but I do seem to be better than I was when I first started. If I had like a little bit of pepper that just got on my steak, I'd have a reaction. And now like my body seems to be calming down, but it's been like two and a half years of just beef recently adding in salmon. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that I've seen that, you know, I've seen a number of people that have been able to reintroduce other foods back in as time goes by, maybe as a gut mm -hmm. heals more, you can, you know, cause you think about it as a young child, most people can eat a pretty broad diet and then, and then things happen. And then we become, uh, you know, either, uh, sensitize our gut permeability messes up we become i don't know if it's immune compromised or, or what happens but there is some, yeah. some some i've seen people that were had problems with dairy that now became able to tolerate dairy same thing with eggs same thing with uh i've even seen people that had uh sort of anaphylactic reactions to shellfish now suddenly be able to tolerate shellfish again which i thought was really really interesting with that with that sort of thing 
Um, and, and so the rest of the family is, is pretty much eating similar to you right now. Or are they, are they sort of experimenting as well, trying to get some other things in there? Well, my brother seems to have dodged all the health problems somehow. So he's just eating, he's like, eats a pretty regular diet, like standard, standard diet. Um, my mom is pretty strict. Um, she doesn't seem to have the same, I mean, she was incredibly ill last year. She almost died. It was horrible. She, so she's doing something similar to what we're doing. I think she's a little bit less strict because she doesn't have such, um, dramatic mood. She doesn't have a mood disorder. So, um, if she has, you know, a little bit of something here and there, like, I think she's, she's, she's actually watching. I think she's drinking coffee sometimes, but she's pretty much just beef. Um, she likes it. She tried to, she had this, the same thing happened with her actually with C. diff. It was when she went onto the beef diet, she had C. diff, but we got rid of it the same way I got rid of mine. Um, and so she's not eating chicken because that's kind of iffy. So mostly beef and dad is just beef. Um, like, especially with him recovering, there's no point adding in other variables until he's recovered. So that's where we're at. And then my husband Actually, this is interesting. So um, my husband went, he had like terrible depression uh, caused by food and gluten was a huge uh, factor in that. And he did a really restrictive diet and then went down to all beef for about six months. And he's actually managed to introduce more foods back in than he was eating prior to um, like foods he used to react to. He's eating more fruit. He obviously, he doesn't eat grain. He, he can't tolerate dairy either. Uh, he doesn't need eggs either, uh, but he's managed like certain nuts and a number of fruits um, and low carb vegetables more than he could. So that's really good to see. And then my kid is, you know, I would say mm, she started at a hundred percent meat. And now she's probably at like 80 ish or 85 or something. Um, and we're just monitoring her for, you know, rashes or bloating or anything. If she eats, a, too much fruit obviously she likes fruit if she eats too much fruit she'll get a stomach ache but she's also she's only two and a half and she's aware of that so she'll say you know I have a tummy ache and it's like well you ate too many raspberries and that's why but um so that's kind of where my family stands with our dietary restrictions yeah that, you know it's kind of interesting I was in uh I was in Malaysia earlier this year and I've had a whole bunch of speaking engagements canceled obviously to this crazy coronavirus yeah. stuff and I was supposed to go to Brazil and Spain and all these places which I can't go uh, right now, that's but, too bad but I was uh talking and there was a lecture from Cambridge uh that was talking about food sensitivity and he'd done you know using uh uh, immunologic tests and, and, and mm -hmm. tests on the gut. And he's, he's done like a quarter of a million tests every year for 20 years. So something like, it's something like, you know, 5 million tests and red meat almost was never reactive for people. And mm -hmm. so people would have allergies to, or sensitivities to eggs and dairy and seafood and, and all kinds of plant compounds. But red meat seemed to be the safest of the compounds, which I thought was very interesting. And he's, like he said, he's uh, you know, got 20 years of data on that, which is, which is really cool. Now, what would, remind me of the name of your daughter again, because I forgot. Scarlett. <laughs> Scott, she said, she's such a cute little girl. And, and she, she's growing okay and uh, staying healthy otherwise. I mean, you know. Oh, she, she's absolutely perfect. Like the, yeah, she's, she's wonderful. The only time she's ever, and this is something to really think about if you have kids, um, the only time she's ever had a horrible tantrum was um, we were traveling and we bought sausages. And I think, I don't remember who bought the sausages, but they had sugar in them. Like one of the last ingredients was sugar. And so she had like half a sausage with sugar in it. And she had tantrums for three days afterwards, like shaking her crib, screaming tantrums. And she never does that. She doesn't cry. Like she's a perfect little angel. And she had a little bit of sugar one time and turned into a demon toddler. Um, but she's, yeah, she's tall, she's healthy, she's got some chub, uh, and she has a wonderful disposition. Yeah, that's, you know, like that, that first, you know, two years particularly, and then they really, I guess, for the first six years where most of that brain growth develops, it's great to get all those, uh, you know, that energy, that animal fat uh, in the diet. Um, I know for my, because I've got four kids, and I know that, like, when I, when I feed them, um, you know, I'll load them up at breakfast, I'll give them so much animal meat and fat 
eggs, you know, so sometimes uh, they'll get some dairy, but, um, and then I don't have to hear from them for the rest of the day. I mean, I, they're, not, they're not complaining about constantly being hungry, wanting snacks, which is, I mean, it makes parenting a lot easier when you're not, you know, turning around trying to feed them every 30 minutes because they're constantly hungry, particularly when you got a bunch of them because they're, they're all hungry at different yeah. times and they're like, you know, look, um, you know, it's, it's kind of silly. So what, what's in, what, what brought you down to Florida? Is that uh, just, I mean, the warmer weather maybe or tired of the Russian winter? I mean. Oh, that, that was basically it. Russia was really, really dark, like a dark into the morning and then dark at 4 p.m. Um, well, we needed a place to hang out just so I could kind of be with dad and give him a little bit more time to recover and figured, well, Florida would be a nice break. That, that was pretty much it. Okay. So is the whole family with you there then? or uh... No, we got separated. Like my mom, well, a couple, a couple of things happened. One, mom went back for a doctor's appointment um, right before this coronavirus thing happened. And then my brother is about to have a baby, like his first baby. Um, and we figured if we're down here, mom's going to be up there to help them with their baby because it's a weird time to have a kid right now. Yeah, I'm gonna if it's okay, uh, Mrs. Pierce. I'm gonna unmute you if you wanna if you wanna add in this. Just, just uh, if that is that okay if I do that. I don't know if you wanna come on and say something or no. Is that okay? I'm gonna. I'm gonna I think so. Anyway, welcome. Uh, this Hi is there, Tammy Peterson, hey, Kayla's mom. mom. Good, to, good to see you. Um, Thank you. Uh, nice glad to see you're doing you. healthier and recovering. I, we'd heard okay. you know that, that you've been sick, and so it's good to hear that you're you're back. And so you can probably put grandma's perspective on the on the on the kids and stuff like that but uh oh um, Scarlett, she's unbelievably stable it i've never seen a kid that that stable yeah and that's that, she'll be taller than me <laughs> <laughs> she might i mean getting good nutrition and stable energy makes a huge fact a huge huge difference and yeah you know it's kind of like we we all know it that sugar makes our kids go crazy and but yet the we kind of feed it to them as a reward and it's like what are we rewarding you know i mean i tell people the kid's not going to love you anymore because you you know gave them diabetes or something you know, <laughs> or made them addicted to sugar so it's good that you're, you're you guys are learning early i mean obviously you had a dramatic uh experience uh, so she doesn't have any signs of jra or anything like that or any joint issues like 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 you had that, that uh, no there's no signs of anything and i've been super paranoid like I was so scared introducing just because I'm so restricted I was so scared of introducing fruit like Andre and I Andre's my husband had like huge fights about it uh, he's just like because he actually feels he actually feels better after going to just beef he feels better with a bit of carbs yeah. like a bit and certain carbs and he does feel better like that so he so his position was well we don't know enough about the diet like it might be okay for kids and my position was well it's really hard for me to feed my kid things that make me sick. Um, but watching her, like I've w watched obviously like a hawk and having a little bit of fruit. Like she has, I, she has to eat her meat and then she gets like fruit or parsnips or carrots or something like a little bit. And that seems to make her happy and it doesn't have any, it hasn't been hard on her. So that's okay. Um, at the very, when she was really little, it was harder her, for her to digest. So we pushed it as far as we could. Like meat was easy, but I figured anything she wasn't able to digest, like don't give them to her. And she also won't eat certain things. Like she's getting more interested because there are other people here who just eat a regular diet. So she's like, well, what's that? But if Andre gives her like a little piece of beet or like tomato or something, she'll just say like yuck and give it back. So luckily she pretty much self-regulates. Yeah, that's what I would say with those foods as well. Um, what, how is she with colic? I'm just wondering because my thought is, you know, we see these colicky babies. Yeah. Um, did she have a lot of colic or no? Um, no, no. She used to get stomach aches. I'm sure she used to get stomach aches after I breastfed when I was still eating salad. I'd breastfeed and she, I could, you could see, you can see when babies cry if they're crying because they're in pain or what they're crying about. Like you can hear the different cries, especially as a mom that stopped when I went to just beef, when I went to just beef, she stopped getting stomach aches. Uh, I'm sure the colic, I'm sure colic is from what they're eating. Yeah. I, I would postulate that makes sense, you know, cause and I suspect maybe when we introduce fiber into a, 
diet of a child that never had fiber and may not be well adjusted to eat fiber, you know, we, we, we start introducing the, you know, the stewed vegetables and the, you know, the, 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 the baby food, the rices. And mm -hmm. I suspect that fiber on the gut, on a little baby's gut is probably maybe leading to that. I don't know. It's, it's, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Gas and just pain. Yeah, right, Definitely. Sure. Like Scarlett, yeah. even, even we tried like little bits of sweet potato and things. And then I said, no, we're not, we're not doing anything. Like we're just doing meat until she's older, but um, she couldn't digest that. Like she couldn't digest vegetables till she was like one and a half or a little bit older until you could tell she was digesting like small amounts of vegetables better. So yeah. Is, yeah. I'm sure that's what like babies shouldn't just randomly scream. Like <laughs> otherwise no one would have, like if you have a kid that's colicky all the time, no, like we couldn't have evolved that way. It would have driven parents crazy. <laughs> A lot of parents put up with it. Hey, somebody's asking Michaela about uh, fasting protocols, wet versus dry fasting. I don't know if you're, are you messing with any of that stuff or, or do you find a benefit to that? I've kind of messed with everything, especially when the C. diff infection was really bad. I was like, well, maybe I can fast it away. Like, I don't know. Maybe that would work. It, it doesn't, just <laughs> for people wondering. But um, I tried dry fasting and wet fasting. Um, I'd probably like, I usually tell people, I do feel better when I fast. So when I first started eating um, the all beef diet, I was eating three to three times a day because I didn't know that you didn't have to. Then I went pretty naturally to two meals a day. Um, but I still, honestly, I gain weight easily, like, very easily. I'm not super athletic, mainly because I have two joints replaced. So hopefully that'll change eventually. But um, if I overeat, even if it's just beef, I'll gain weight. So I do find fasting helps with energy and controls like weight gain. Um, I usually tell people, you know, try 18 hours, then try 24 and kind of, and then try 36 and just play it by ear. Keep your salt intake high. I'd recommend the wet fasting with electrolytes because it just makes it so much easier. And I don't know if the, like, I don't necessarily think the benefits of I don't know if there are any benefits of dry fasting that there aren't with wet fasting, but I do think people should try it. Uh, if you're super athletic, burning through calories all the time, then, and you don't have any extra body fat, then don't fast, <laughs> uh, like eat. But if you have a whole bunch of extra body fat, then I think it's good to play around with. I've found benefits. Yeah. I, I, you know, the concern of dry fasting is dehydration and I don't know how long, you yeah. can, how long you're going to go with that. But I mean, I think most people, I think uh, Jason Fung and some of these others really will not, not push dry fasting on there. I know, I know Cole Robinson, the snake diet guy will occasionally recommend dry fast for some people. And I'm not sure how long he goes with that stuff, but yeah, I would be concerned with, you know, dry fasting for any longer than 24 hours would be. He, he went a week. Yeah. yeah. A week. But he looked, he did not look happy at the end of that week. And I don't like, I don't see the benefits necessarily. I know I, for him, I think he suggests that weight loss is faster, which it might be because you would get rid of all the, like you use up all the, your water. So you don't have it in your body, but no, I don't see the benefits of dry fasting and I haven't experienced them. I tried, um, I didn't go very long. I think I tried 36 hour dry fast and it was easier almost at the beginning, but then it didn't feel good. So I stopped. Yeah. Okay. So how many asking you, um, do you find that other lifestyle choices outside of, I guess, outside of diet affect autoimmune flare-ups for you personally? Yeah, I do. So there, there are some things I can get away with without having autoimmune flare-ups. Like um, I've smoked weed a couple of times that hasn't seemed to really affected anything. Um, alcohol makes me feel terrible the next day, but it doesn't really seem to bother me if it's like, you know, vodka or something. Obviously I'm not going to be drinking wine or beer. Um, the only time, the thing that flares my autoimmune symptoms other than food are if I get sick, if I get a virus, specifically a virus, um, all my joints flare up. And I know lots of people get joint pain with viruses, but I really, really feel awful. I get brain fog. I get kind of depressed, which is normal, but I think it's 
uh, I think it's worse with the arthritis because it's, it's my old arthritic joints that flare up again with viral infections. That's about, that's about it though. Um, I would recommend exercising does make me feel better mood wise. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Somebody's asking if you have any other, you know, other than just, uh, you know, basically an all beef diet, any other, and, and you play with organ meats for a while. I mean, I, I know when I was, when we were in Denver together and you tried, we both tried the, remember that, that the butcher that was making us eat the raw horrifying. pig brains. And, uh, that was horrifying. I was like, I'm just be, just because I only eat meat does not mean I want to eat raw brain that those are different things. Um, that was horrifying. Did I try? I ate liver for a while last, um, last, no, like a year and a half ago. It didn't happen this year, but a year and a half ago, I had huge cravings for liver. So I had liver for a while. And then in the summer it went away. I don't know if that had anything to do with vitamin D or not. Um, I went to Russia and it didn't happen this year. So I ate liver for a while, but I haven't eaten it for months and months and months. Um, I know Paul Saladino is really into like, all the extra nutrients that you theoretically need. And I've thought about it and my, my main diet, like I I'll eat when I first started, I was cutting the fat off and cutting the gristle off and everything. And it took about 10 months until I started to be able to digest that better. And then since then I actually like the taste. So I don't trim steaks unless they're way too fatty. And then I just can't handle that much fat. Um, and then I'm eating a lot of ribs, which I guess like I don't trim any of the ribs. So there's a lot of, more uh, what like tendony tissue um because you can make it crunchy so then it tastes good but that's my diet like i don't really do i haven't done organs since i craved liver like a year and a bit ago yeah somebody marcelo who's asking do you recommend anything else for gut healing outside of just an all beef diet is there any other sort of you know supplements or microbiome things? stuff yeah, what, what um, have you found that works besides beef, if anything? I would, like, honestly, I'd recommend people just do the beef. Do it really, really strictly if you have um, really bad gut issues and just wait. And if you've done it for, like, six or seven weeks and you're experiencing, like, and your digestion is still totally screwed up, I would go to a naturopath and look at your microbiome in case – you have an overgrowth of something because some of those overgrowths aren't fixed by an all beef diet, like candida, because that feeds off of like carbs and sugar mainly like candida seems to go away. Um, certain bacterial strains that feed off of carbs will go away, but C. difficile doesn't seem to be fixed by this. So I like, I don't think there's any harm in going to a natural path, getting a stool test done, seeing what's going on there. Remembering that, they don't test for everything that's in there. And we hardly know anything about the gut, particularly what's in the small intestine. Like it's, it's really hard to tell what's going on in there. Um, see what they say. My experience with probiotics was always negative. They always um, gave me flare ups. My experience with the oral fecal microbiota transplant that I did, I didn't have any negative symptoms to that, which was really interesting. So probiotics gave me symptoms that didn't give me any symptoms and it fixed the C. diff. Um, I do think that a lot of people who gravitate towards the all beef diet have some sort of, my guess is small intestinal bacterial problem, but it's like, it's nearly impossible to test what's going on in there. Um, so yeah, I'd go to all beef and if you still have problems, get a stool test, but like, I don't have, I don't recommend probiotics particularly, or even fermented foods just because they didn't work for me. Um, what are you doing any like supplements, vitamin D, magnesium, any, any supplements outside of the, the, the diet? So I am now, I didn't like, I went to all beef and I didn't have anything other than beef, like for a very long time. Um, I was worried about fillers and pills and it was just like, well, maybe my vitamins will just correct themselves. And my zinc deficiency, which I'd had since like, I was a kid, uh, corrected itself. My vitamin D didn't really budge. So it's still low. Um, right now I'm supplementing a really tiny, and this is just because I'm, I'm living with older people and I'm a bit concerned about, I don't want to transfer them the virus. So I'm supplementing a bit of vitamin C, like a hardly any, just a powder. And I'm using zinc, uh, pure zinc drops. So it's just zinc, I think sulfate in water. 
Um, and that's it for now. And that's not because I'm depleted in either of those. Uh, it's preventative if, if it is preventative. So it's just those two, but, um, I'm not taking, like I said, I'm not taking them because I'm depleted in anything. Someone is asking, <laughs> somebody's asking if you tried the vodka in Russia and if so, how was it? <laughs> oh, actually, no, that's actually a really good point. Um, the vodka, <laughs> the Russian vodka has sugar added to it, which it took me a while to figure out and really did not make me feel very good after a while. Um, but gin, like most people know, when you make gin, you have something that's kind of like vodka and then you add botanicals to it. So I figured that out the hard way when I had a gin that had almond extract added to it and I have a nut allergy. So that didn't go well. Um, but it turns out the vodka in Russia has ingredients added to it. So if you go to Russia, don't drink the Russian vodka, drink the like American vodka or whatever's there. Beluga is okay too, but um, the Russian vodka tasted better because it had sugar in it. <laughs> Someone, uh, Marcel is asking if you do anything else outside of diet to help with, you know, I know, I know you'd suffer from some anxiety and some other things. Are you doing anything else outside of diet, you know, meditation, whatever? I mean, what else seems to help with mental health for you? Um, when I, before I went to Russia and like my life turned upside down, I had a really good morning routine going on where I would wake up. Um, I was using Headspace, um, just because it's easy. It's a meditation app and it's kind of guided. And I was only doing 10 minutes because I've got a short attention span. I can only like handle 10 minutes of guided meditation and that, so I was sleeping with my phone outside my bedroom, um, doing 10 minutes of meditation and then doing 30 minutes of exercise, then stretching and then waiting as long as I could to check my phone. And though just those things made like made a huge difference to my mental health in the morning, particularly, having my phone outside my bedroom, like before I went to bed and when I woke up and not just checking it instantly, that helped a lot. Um, and then I've also been looking into, and this is, uh, well, I've been looking into hallucinogens treating um, mental health issues. And I've seen, I've had a lot of success with that. Like um, there seems to be, and there is some evidence that hallucinogens work like serotonin in the brain. So I've been experimenting a bit with micro dosing and taking some larger doses of a hallucinogen um, chemical. And I think that's helped a lot, but you have to be in a pretty state. I find I have to be in a pretty stable mental place, which I've been since the all beef diet in order to tolerate any type of hallucinogen. Yeah. My, my friend, Chris Bell has recently done something similar. Uh, with Yeah. And, and, yeah. I've uh, heard really good things about it again. Yeah. And so he, uh, you know, he's a big proponent of that. And there's a guy, Dr. Gary Schleifer, who I had dinner with, uh, Oh, well, I guess before this coronavirus and he's big into that. And so maybe we'll bring him on the platform and talk to it. I've interviewed him before, but he, he thinks, uh, some interesting things about that. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, unknown, untested, sort of new new frontier for some people. I mean, there's people that are doing it and seeing some benefits, so interesting to see. Um, mm -hmm. Casey's asking about skin and hair care, are you using animal or tallow-based products, or you find that skin care products can set off your symptoms, or? Um, I don't really, so I've never had autoimmune symptoms specifically, or depression or anything from skin care. And I was, uh, skin care, or anything put on my skin. I was all worried about that, but I do think um, I do think it's specifically a gut issue. So i definitely have reactions to, so I can't wear any sunscreen without getting hives everywhere and certain products do give me hives, but that's not the same as an auto or autoimmune symptoms. Um, I pretty much wear, I wear makeup. Um, I don't wear any like lip gloss or anything in case I lick it off. I don't want it to transfer. Um, and I use lanolin as a moisturizer. Yeah, so lanolin lan is an animal based. I think it comes from sheep, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it comes from sheep and it's pure. Um, and so I, I would, it works really, really, really well too. It work, works way better than something like Vaseline. It's kind of similar in consistency, but I'd recommend lanolin. And then just, I, I don't wear, like I tried the all natural makeup products and one of them just completely, like I dried out my skin. One of them I got hives too. So just because it says all natural or organic or whatever, doesn't mean it's any better than, um, any of the more processed stuff for me anyway. 
There is uh, some, oh, somebody's asking, did you ever have any issues with oxalate dumping? I don't know. Like, how do you even test for oxalate dumping? I like, I get, I get the whole, I, I'm more inclined to think that my problems were lectins, but I don't even know if there's any evidence for that. Um, so I don't know what was going on. Yeah, my skin broke out but it only ever broke out if I ate something wrong. It, I never, I didn't really have a dumping experience when I went to the all beef, but I went from all beef to, well, from all beef, sorry, to all beef from meat and salad. And, you know, some people are saying, well, spinach is really evil. So I could have had dump, a dumping experience from that, but not really. I kind of just improved. The only thing that got worse is I had got a C. difficile infection. So, I mean, you guys obviously have had a couple of rough years. I mean, you know, just looking at the whole family. And everything. <laughs> Are things settling down a little bit? Is there going to be some stability? Is there going to be, I mean, what do you guys got? What do you have coming up, you know, I mean, with you or the family in the next couple of years? And hopefully it won't be so. I mean, obviously we I, all got to get through this crazy coronavirus <laughs> stuff. But, uh, you know, it's like one thing after another. And you guys have been hit particularly hard with your, your both your parents and then, you know, obviously your own health struggles and now we're all being kind of locked in place sort of thing and uh, no one really knows what's going on so um, um what's on the horizon well i don't know i, I mean hopefully like, hopefully there isn't any horrible health thing for a while i mean i think i'm under control like i don't see me erupting in something but who knows um so i think i'm under control my mom seems to be doing well so i'm not really worried about her my dad still probably has he's got at least six months of recovery to go and then hopefully things will calm down again and hopefully the world will start working properly again um yeah it's been rough it's been a rough couple of years yeah hopefully we're wishing you that you know wishing for hopefully it settles down everybody is it's, it seems like Thanks. uh what is your what's your what is your dad doing in his recovery? I mean, does he exercise? Is it is he is he a point where he can exercise yet? Is he just eating and taking it easier? What's what's going well, on with his? He's you know, he's mind? pretty much taking it easy. He's writing. He's finishing editing his book. Um, it depends if he has a good day or a bad day. Like a, a good day, he does as much as he can. So he went for a run the other day. But on a bad day, he's pretty much just getting through the day. I mean, fortunately, fortunately, he's on this diet. So at least that's like, he's healing as fast as humanly possible, I think. Did he lose a lot, quite a bit of weight when he was in Russia or something? Looked like he yeah. was maybe, maybe thinner, but I, I don't know. He, I don't see him all the he, time. So. He lost muscle. Like he was in bed um, when he was intubated. It was like three weeks in bed. So that's going to lose. So he lost muscle in Russia. He needs to get that back, but he'll get there. It's just slow. Yeah. Um, Tove, and I may have mispronounced that. Sorry if I did. She said, uh, or he, they, they said that, uh, you had an issue with aged beef. Uh, apparently how do you find beef that isn't aged or where do you source, where are you sourcing your meat oh. these days? Um, so it, it seems to like, it depends on the aged beef. I feel like if it's aged properly, I don't seem to have an issue with it, but some of the stuff that tastes weird, <laughs> um, I don't feel good after I eat it or my digestion's messed up or something. Um, how do you find beef that isn't aged? I mean, they have non-aged. Usually you have to pay more for aged beef. So you can just grocery store. Yeah. I mean, the dry, yeah, obviously the dry aged beef is uh, uh, something that uh, yeah does cost more. Cause it tastes, it tastes pretty good. Honestly. I oh, I hate it. it. Yeah, no, I, I, I hate it. My good. dad hates it too. <laughs> I'd much rather have the fresh stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, I mean, most, most uh, cattle in the, in us, and I presumably in Canada gets hung for several weeks. I mean, that's, that's yeah. just the, the general process. So you're not going to get yeah. like fresh off the animal like you might. Oh, uh, that's what she means. Uh, it, like most beef is fine. If it's the super aged stuff that you could taste, like that changes the taste, then sometimes I'll get kind of brain foggy afterwards. But that's only really happened at the beginning. It used to happen a lot more and now it doesn't seem to happen anymore. So even if you can't get that, get like super fresh, I think that that'll eventually go away for people. So someone is asking about, again, back to these psychedelic things or mushrooms. Did you try mushrooms or psychedelics and did you have any autoimmune reactions to those? 
I actually found something. It's um, I I talked to this guy named Hamilton Morris. I don't know if anybody on here knows him, but um, he pointed me in the direction of something called ACO DMT, which is a pro drug to psilocybin. So it's not DMT; it's pro drug to psilocybin, but it's a chemical. It's a research chemical. So I don't have an immune response to it because you take like, you know, between you take milligrams of it and it's a chemical. So that doesn't bother me. Um, so that's what I've been experimenting with because I didn't want to, as much as I like mushrooms, I didn't want to take a whole bunch of mushrooms and then have an autoimmune response to it afterwards. Uh, Brett is asking, I guess you said you were going to start a podcast. Have you, have you named it yet or have you started it yet? Or what's I am, on? I am going to start a podcast. I bought some equipment here. Um, I think I'm just going to, it's going to be, I think I'm just going to call it the Michaela Peterson podcast. I've thought about it and I don't think it's going to be any more original than that, but I am starting next week, I think. Well, good for you. That's, that's fun. Thank that's, you. You, 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 learn, you get to learn a lot of stuff, which is really. Uh, yeah. I'm looking good, forward to that. Yeah. Uh, Wilma is asking, uh, and she's asked this question a couple of times, so I better get it in there. Um, did you find that fasting had changed your metabolism, either good or bad? Did, did it make a difference to you with, or I don't even know if you can assess that easily, but, uh, I can't really assess that easily. The positive benefits I've seen, like one of the reasons I like fasting other than the fact around 36 hours, I get an energy boost, which could be, you know, cortisol or adrenaline spiking. And I really like that. It gives me like a sharp sense of focus. I think my eyesight improves a little bit and, then all, and all that could be, you know, me trying to go hunt or look for food or whatever, but I like that my sense of smell gets better. Um, but mostly I've found I get less hungry. So if I start eating like three, if I eat three times a day, or just if I snack and it, you can easily snack on an all beef diet because I'll have like jerky or I know how to cook beef. So it tastes good. So if I snack all day for a while, I'm just hungry like all the time. And then if I f do a more of an extended fast and go to one meal a day, my hunger is a lot more controlled. So my, the main benefit I find from fasting is it decreases my hunger. I don't know if that has anything to do with metabolism. Um, it hasn't slowed down or sp sped up from what I can see. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, you know, because I'm 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 currently kind of one meal a day I'm, as I'm leaning out a little bit, and uh, I find that once you know once you break the seal on eating, I mean, your your appetite goes up. You get this. Yeah. Uh, you get a uh, you know you get these interesting cephalic phase of digestion, and you get these biphasic insulin and GLP responses, which all lead to increasing hunger at some point. So yeah, it's like, really annoying. It's really annoying. And I have such a hard time. Like I had a really hard time when I was eating carbs, I was just starving all the time. Um, and overeating and just like, I felt like I was starving. And I think that was partly a side effect from the antidepressants I was taking as well, looking back on it. Um, but now, yeah, if I start snacking, I'm I'm hungry and I don't even know if it's the same type of hunger other people experience, but it's annoying. So I find the, the once a day I'm less hungry. It's less annoying. All right. Justin's asking about TikTok. Are you, are you, are you doing much on TikTok and are you finding that you feel sorry? Give me one sec. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm on video with a bunch of people. Um, like 15 minutes. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Back. TikTok. I think TikTok is a total waste of time, but I got suckered into it. Yeah. Yeah. The um, it's, it's like the young, youngest group. Right. So anyway. Yeah. It's hitting like teenagers things to dancing on it. It's kind of fun, but I have to be like happier. I'd have to be like a happier. And it's not that I'm not happy. I just have to, I don't know what, I think it's a waste of time. I might put out a video now and then, but I still think it's a waste of time. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't gotten it. <laughs> Um, somebody's asking about how you cooking your meat. Uh, they're, they're concerned about searing meat. Is pan frying meat bad? Are you worried about ages and heterocyclic amines and polycystic poly aromatic hydrocarbons? Um, are you, how do you cook? I mean, what are you, what are you doing to cook your meat? Are you slow cooking it? Are you cooking it, searing it? Um, I usually cook it in an air fryer from frozen. So I like, I really don't like, I don't like grocery shopping. I don't like washing dishes. I don't like cooking. Like, I don't like any of that. So I usually take a frozen steak and I put it in the air fryer and then I flip it once and then I put salt on it and eat it. Um, no, I'm not. I like, 
I like it. Like if I had a barbecue, uh, there's a barbecue here. If I had a barbecue at home, I'd barbecue. Cause that's how I think, I think it tastes that tastes the best. I'm not worried about the char. I know over like more charred meat can give some people, especially at the beginning, digestive problems. But I kind of just suffered through that considering I had C. diff. I couldn't tell the difference anyway. Um, no, I'm not worried about those things. I'm only worried about things that I found affected me. And I went down the route, like I was drinking distilled water with like added thing, added uh, electrolytes in it for a while. Cause I was worried about everything in the water. Um, but I found that I didn't really have to worry about water and I didn't really have to worry about how I cooked my meat. So are you, um, you know, cause you have the diagnosis of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and, you know, obviously it resulted in uh, horrible destruction of a couple of joints, ankle replacement, hip replacement. Um, do you still see a rheumatologist and are we still seeing serological markers of the disease present or is that resolved? Can you- I actually never had serological markers. Okay. Um, so I never tested positive for that. So eventually my diagnosis changed from juvenile rheumatoid arthritis to juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Um, and no, I don't see a rheumatologist anymore because it's just a complete waste of time. What about, uh, I guess, I'm obviously you see an orthopedic surgeon and you wouldn't have had an ankle revision. How, how, do, how, does, how do they feel about your diet? Have they, have they commented or is it? I, I don't see, I don't see them. Like there are, you don't really follow up um, with those guys very often. Um, so the hip replacement guy, I haven't seen, you know, in 10 years. And the ankle replacement guy was originally in Vancouver and I live in Toronto. Um, and he actually installed it slightly crooked. So I didn't go back to see him. And the second time I did a revision was somebody in Switzerland. So I don't see, I haven't mentioned, oh, he knew actually, because I went to that hospital and I said, I'm not going to eat any of that food. I'm only eating beef. I ate beef, obviously in the hospital. Um, Dad brought me food actually. Um, And I refused, I was like a difficult patient there because I refused to take any of the oral pain medication because I was really, I was like, I'd rather be in excruciating pain than have this affect my mental state again. Um, and eventually they found a, like a pure morphine liquid that they use in epidurals that I, like I would take. Um, so what did he think about it? Interestingly enough, he had a teacher in college that was on an all meat diet. So for some reason in Europe, there doesn't seem to be as much kickback. Like I, we talked to people in Russia and they were pretty much just like, ah, oh, that's cool. And a lot of them had met someone from a long time ago who'd been on an all meat diet. So there's less of a, oh my God, you don't eat certain foods than there is in North America. That's what I found anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would assume that in Russia, they don't demonize meat. They're probably happy when they can get it and, you know, uh, probably prize it more. I don't know. Or, or, did they, or did they have an anti-meat sentiment in Russia too? They're um, the, the vegan... Like there's definitely a vegan community in Russia, but yeah, not like here. Most people don't put up with kind of like any bullshit there. There's, there's too there's too many problems to deal with things that aren't really problems. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I like that. <laughs> I'm sure it'll offend some people. Um, <laughs> hey, what's uh, somebody's asking? I don't know. Do you do you assess labs anymore? Are you looking at do you things like CRP? Has that been up and down? Do you, have you checked anything that? you know, that you're worried about? Um, I haven't checked anything. I, I did all my blood work in December when it was my two year, like carnivore diet anniversary and everything was normal except for vitamin D, which was a little bit low still. So that hasn't changed. Um, I don't really do, I'm not going to like consistently test blood work if I don't have any symptoms. I'll probably do it again at three years. And get my micronutrients tested again at three years just to keep everyone posted. But um, I'm so like done with the medical system. I don't, the only reason I get my blood tested at all is so other people can feel better about it. Um, it's not because I'm worried about it. Yeah, I know the feeling. So uh, I saw your mom says she likes the, the, the air fryer uh, as well, straight from frozen. And that does work pretty well. I mean, that's the nice thing about those air fryers. You can just throw them in frozen. You don't have to worry about deep. deep it's better frozen, actually, because the, in, the inside yeah. doesn't cook. Yeah, it doesn't cook as much. Yeah, somebody's asking about, I don't know, do you have a brand air fryer that you recommend? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, 
Yeah, I do actually. Ninja. I used Phillips and I found the Phillips one wore out faster. So Ninja. Yeah, I, I went through one. I wore out. I, I wore out two of them. I think over time, and my family yeah. used a lot of them. And uh, you know, I've got currently. I got another Gourmia from Costco, which works pretty well for me. But uh, it's kind uh, of uh, okay. It's kind of. Uh, I had one that wore out, and then I got a different kind. For, I think it was like a Phillips one, and it wore out. But uh, interesting. So, Ninja's good. Okay, well, that's good. Um, let's see. We just got a couple more minutes left here. Somebody is wishing you. Wishing you and your family are stay healthy, and there's there are there. Thank Amanda. you. Amanda is a proud Toronto Toronto Torontonian. Is what she said. Torontonian. Ah, uh, thank you. And just wishing they're wishing your family, your dad, uh, help. Um, you know, somebody's just commenting about Hashimoto's. You're not eating. I guess you're not doing any bacon then, if you can't have pork. So it sounds like that's off the menu for you. Yeah, unfortunately. Definitely. All right. Well, I'm, I, I'm going to give your mom a chance to say anything. If she has anything else she wants to add in. Is there anything, Miss Pearson, is there anything you wanted to add or comment on? Oh, is she on mute? She's muted. Yeah, I think she muted herself. Let me see. I can unmute her. Let me unmute her. She's, she's, there she is. I'm sorry. Am I on there now? Yeah, now you're, you're good. On. Sorry. Okay. I thought Michaela might mention the infrared sauna. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. Thanks, Mom. Um, so the if you do have autoimmune, especially uh, mental problems, um, the only thing I've really found that helps other than diet is an infrared sauna and getting in there and sweating. And that gives me like a 20% mood boost afterwards especially if I've eaten something I shouldn't have. Um, and I think, I do, I think it's really because it helps my body get it out. Um, that's my theory, but I don't know if that's true. So the infrared sauna uh, and exercise and fasting, those are the three things I find most beneficial to my mood other than diet. Um, and then meditation and writing can help too, but those three things. Good point. Mom, mom gets in there. Mom has one in her basement. She gets in there like once a day minimum. So also Epsom, Epsom salt baths. I really like at night too. Oh yeah. But not That's too late. Otherwise I'm too thirsty in the morning. <laughs> like just after dinner is pretty good. Yeah, that's good. I've got a, the, the house that we purchased a while ago had a sauna in it and it, it's an old, it's like a really old one. You know, it's like an old Finlandia one. Oh, it gets nice. up to like 220 degrees. So you can really yeah. cook in there. And so I think the newer ones, they don't let, let them get as hot or something like that perhaps. So I'll jump yeah. in there most evenings, you know, and uh, that, that I, I, I do enjoy it. I like it that, you know, it's like extra exercise. So with just sitting there. So, and there's a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of data on, on sauna in general as being potentially beneficial. So mm -hmm. infrared sauna is particularly mm -hmm. good. I don't even, I never go in a traditional sauna anymore. If I can yeah. avoid it. We, we tried the traditional saunas in Russia, the Banyas, mm -hmm. and it, you could stay in there for, I could stay in there for 12 minutes and that's somebody, and I'm used to saunaing and it was 12 minutes max. You wear a hat and everything. So your hair doesn't burn. It was, unbelievably hot it was like um over 100 degrees celsius it was hot um i like the infrared ones much better i seem to i don't feel like dying in there as quickly yeah i don't i guess i'm more of a masochist i don't mind because i might get up to 210 i'll sit in there for half an hour and you know sweat and i'll listen to uh you know listen to podcasts and you know whatever. oh man i, I no. discovered i've discovered i can put my phone on there as long as it's on the floor where it's cool by the vent yeah and uh, you know you can you can entertain be entertained because if you just sit there with nothing to do you get it it, it, it takes a lot longer so. Uh, wow. I don't. Yeah, sit no, thank you. Nothing. I pray the rosary. Wedding <laughs> <laughs> seem to go together very well. well that sounds <laughs> good. And Brett's clapping. Brett's uh, Brett's uh, he's a he's a guy that uh, really is very thankful. He's a thankful carnivore, and so yeah, uh, yeah. Um, me too. Good for you guys. So, well, I tell you what, Michaela, we uh, we've just about expended an hour. We have to do a, we've got a little public meeting after this that people can go to if they want. Thank you again. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Thank you guys for being willing to be public about this. I know that uh, there's a lot of pushback. Obviously, you and I have both been attacked 
uh, and your father's been attacked and uh, hopefully your mom's not been attacked much, but I mean, we get, we get kind of uh, uh, a lot of junk thrown at us and it's good to see you just pers persevering and uh, you know, keep pushing on. And I think, uh, I, I don't know, Michaela, if you know about the study that Harvard is doing right now with the, with the carnivore diet, I've been trying to get that out there on social media. And so. Oh, I can share that. Yeah. If Finally. Mind, good. If you, if you don't mind, it's, uh, you know, we have it linked here at Meter X. Uh, if, if, if there's a place people want to go find it, uh, I've got it on my bio, but yeah, they're, they're collecting data. They started uh, a, about a week ago and we're trying to get as many people to participate so we can advance the science so we can, you know, cause people are complaining about the fact that, uh, well, there's no science and no one will support it. And our doctor, you know, says there's no science. So this is our, our opportunity as a community to participate in the science and, you know, help to, you know, maybe make it easier for other people or even for ourselves. Oh, yeah. Something maybe um, you might be interested in um, about two, about a year and a half ago, I put up a questionnaire that had all the health symptoms I could list, uh, like secondary health symptoms to autoimmune disorders and a personality test and a whole bunch of diet questions and maybe 11,000 people filled it out. So I haven't done anything with the data because I'm not entirely sure how to sort it out, but there's like 10,000 people's worth of data. I shared it in vegan groups and in carnivore groups and just shot it out to dad's audience. But that has a ridiculous amount of data that I'm not sure if anything will come of it, but it could be interesting too. Yeah, it's good to mull it. I did, I did a similar survey, you know, 25 question survey and got about the same thing, about 11,000 people. So that's great that we have this community. But it really, uh, I think, to, to mobilize those same people to participate in this Harvard study, because it's very similar to a survey based thing. You can add labs if you have them. You don't have to have the labs. If you can get that out to your audience, uh, that would help to, you know, further, you know, just legitimize what we're doing because I think it Yeah, okay. Good. It does. Perfect, guys. Well, I'm going to shut this one down. Michaela, Tammy, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow like we are every day, and uh, I'll see some of you guys in a public meeting. Thanks again, Michaela. Stay safe. Stay safe. You know, we'll all get through this crazy coronavirus and uh, yeah, you, know, you too. We'll, hopefully we'll talk to you down the road. Okay. Good to yeah. see you, Miss Haskin. It was a see pleasure, you, pleasure meeting you too, Miss Miss Peterson. Okay, take care, guys. Okay, bye-bye. I'm gonna shut down. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.